and the key events and activities that you've already done as leaders and entrepreneurs is shaping your path. And so this is a really important opportunity to be thinking about what have I been doing so far? Where do I think that that's leading me to? So in the entrepreneur's journey, they're gonna see patterns that are repeated. To be successful going forward in the future, you need to understand the patterns which are positive and energizing in yourself and in your entrepreneurial career. And you need to understand the cycles and the dynamics that are potentially negative so that you can become more aware of them and potentially better moderate them. What I hope that people will take away from this experience is the beginning of learning how to work in a very deeply collaborative, candid way with other entrepreneurs, perhaps at a level of candor and directness that you may not experience in many other environments in your life. The subtle shift that's happening here is you yourself, as a founder, your role has shifted. Initially, you were the one who was doing and developing that product, but now you're developing something else. You are having people develop the product for the company, and your role is you are developing people. Leadership is, I think, fundamentally about bringing the best out in people. And by creating that type of space, that safe working space, that environment that allows people to succeed, inevitably and invariably will allow the organization to succeed. In many ways, the role of founders and leaders as they drive these organizations is to align the behaviors of their team members, of the people in, in the organization, to align with the objectives of the organization. That is really what leadership is about, and that ensures a higher level of success. I would encourage fellow entrepreneurs to focus on identifying those people who can provide them key insight and valuable guidance, to benefit from the counsel of those before them who've gone through and done this. Uh, the entrepreneurial community is very helpful and resourceful, particularly for one another. Tap into that. Don't try to do it alone. There's a lot of resources available. When you have an idea and you want to run a pilot, it's easy to set up a pilot so that it, it validates your idea, but then to set it up in a way that if you try to increase by 10x the number of people that are receiving it, it won't work, right? So it's, a, it's about setting your pilot up to learn what you need to learn about um, how your your initiative could grow if it was like achieving rapid success rather than you know baking things in some safe little way. One of the things that I noticed that was kind of often ignored that's the, the best resource is it's not it's not anything that you're designing technically it's like who are your foot soldiers right who is going to run around advocating for your project for your technology helping people understand it facilitating training how good are you at finding boots on the ground that can do that for you look for existing social systems or associations or institutions or universities that you can partner with that you wouldn't have assumed. Like we were talking today about, you know, finding universities that might be able to provide your monitoring and evaluation or finding like a technical school that might be interested in um, cultivating special knowledge of how to work with your innovation. Um, just don't try to do everything yourself, right? Like think of partnerships beyond just like funding and media really like give over some of the authority of like implementing or follow up or training um, to organizations that are gonna stay there and outlast you and that preceded you and already have robust capacity. What is it that this technology does to jobs? I think for example, five years in the future or whenever some of these, you know, the digital analyst is real and good, you know, something which can do human level work You'll have companies which, for example, say, we admit automation can happen, so we want to hire you, and we're going to pay you a bonus if you can automate part of your job. If you have that company A versus company B that just pretends like automation is not happening, who do you want to work for? And so with robotics, we're in that state where, you know, thousands and thousands of them in different types, you know, millions of people working on them are able to work on them, and pretty soon, it could get up to sort of like millions, billions, and then at some point you top out at uh, seven billion people figuring out what to do with them. What's different today is you invent something, you do something, you create something. If you, the faster you get it out to the world, you know, within days there can be a thousand people or a hundred thousand people who are willing to work with it, play with it, hack it, figure out what it could be used for. And I'm going to bet on the creativity of a hundred thousand people over the creativity of one small team thinking of the first uses of something all of the time. That's what's interesting and that's what's different about this decade.